Hey everyone, my name is Beacon, and today I'm doing a tutorial on how to fix your power probe butane soldering iron. If you're having the same issues that I'm having, this fix should work on other brands as well, although the disassembly process might be a little bit different. So I was originally looking for a butane soldering iron. I, I was looking at the Weller Portisol and the uh, uh, Snap-on, which is practically the same thing, just rebranded. But uh, I, when I was looking around online, I found this for about half the price, and it had really good reviews. Um, actually, I think it was less than that. I think I paid like 38 bucks for it or something. And I found that on Amazon, and I, you know, I bought it. I had high hopes for it, but unfortunately, I was having issues uh, straight out the box. Uh, it would work once in a while, but uh, for the most part, it wouldn't. And the issue is that this wouldn't stay lit. Like, I'd hit that, and it would light up for maybe about a half second, and then it would shut off. So what I was doing was I was taking the tips off, you know, lighting this up with a lighter and then screwing that back on as fast as I could. And, you know, that was a pain in the ass uh, or pain in the fingers, I should say. Uh, what I realized was that I was getting too much fuel pressure in there. And it's kind of like trying to light up a torch. Uh, you know, when you have the fuel turned all the way up, it's just not going to light very well. So I did what some other people would recommend, which was purge the air out the back uh, or switching different fuel brands, and that wasn't working either. What I realized was that the uh, fuel pressure lever was set too high from the factory to begin with. So that's what this video is. I'm going to show you how to fix that. It's pretty simple. All you'll need is a uh, small Phillips head screwdriver. Unscrew that part. And then unscrew this and there's little flat indentations on the side right there for using you know a wrench or pliers just make sure you're not clamping on your threads or you will screw that up i did this earlier so um it was pretty loose to begin with next uh you'll have to probably remove this little instruction sticker that's on this side here and that will give you access to the two phillips head screws Take that half off first. Take the red button out, and then this is your igniter. Uh, when you take that off, you'll see that that has a little wire around the bottom right there. Make sure not to lose that. Next, uh, pop your jet loose from the top there. And this is sometimes a little hard to get off, a little stuck on there, so kind of move it back and forth, and then it should pop off the back side. Take your on off switch off by just sliding it straight out like that. And what you'll wanna do is adjust this lever here. Now this lever is uh, clamping around a, a wheel with teeth on it. So you're gonna to have to move it over uh, one way or the other. If, uh, if you're having issues like I'm having where I'm getting too much pressure, I'm gonna to want to uh, first have this all the way to the uh, left um, where the well, I shouldn't say all the way to the left. If this isn't adjusted right, it, this lever could go all the way over here. Um, but you'll want to have this, uh, this little corner right here lined up with your, your lever. And then you're going to pull this off and then lift it up and then move it over to this other corner right there. At least that's what I had to do. And then move it back down until I felt resistance. And uh, my resistance is right around there. So I'm going to put that back into place. Now, if you're having the issue where that you have too little fuel pressure, have your lever over here and then lift up and then move it towards the, uh, the left and then, or let's see, I should say clockwise, and then uh, you know move it back. So that will give you more fuel. Now I'll put that right back where, let's see, back where I need it. And then I'm gonna stick this back on there like that. And then my on off switch and make sure to get it below that little brass ring right there. It's kind of hard to see. You want to make sure that it is below that. Otherwise you won't be able to turn it on when you get it put back together. And then I'm going to slide the button side part on first. And then I'm going to push my little spring down a little bit so that it is compressed like that. There's a little stopper right there and then stick the nozzle in its little receptacle and press it into place and it uh, needs to be the flat spot right there up for it to close properly. 
Next, get your igniter. And if you notice, there is a little lip right here. You wanna make sure that the wire's on this side of the lip and not down here where that cylinder sits. And then when you stick this in place, the smaller wire is gonna go in this little teeny groove right there. And you wanna make sure that it's in that groove because if it's outside of that groove, then you're probably not gonna make contact with this, which you need to get a spark. Next, put the other half on and then tighten it down. When you're tightening on this side, make sure that your halves are together and those two wires are not getting pinched in the case there. There is a little slot for both of those wires to sit side by side. And then when you put this on, this part needs to be touching that the shorter wire right there. That's why it, you don't want it to get buried inside there. Now, this wire needs to go inside here in this outer ring that you can see right there. If it's on this side of that ring, then it's not gonna make a good spark. So you might have to look through the little side ports there to make sure that it's actually getting in that ring. And then, let's see, did I get in there? Yep, yeah. and then screw it down. But don't do what I just did, which is put that on before you put the button on. If you did it right and you turn that on and it's at the lowest, it'll barely, barely be on and it will light up just like that. So I hope this has helped some people out. Um, I hope you can actually hear me. I've been working in a shop here with uh, quite a few 3D printers going in the background. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, do leave it in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and have a good one.